Every April, the NFL's 32 teams congregate under one roof and spend three days selecting over 200 players aiming to change the trajectory of their franchise forever. The NFL Draft is now a major media event with fans, media, and general managers spending months leading up to it watching hours of film on college athletes searching for that next big star. But of course, for every Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes, there are just as many failures. And while some teams are much better at drafting than others, no team is entirely free of draft day disasters. And in today's video, we're gonna look at each team's biggest draft bust beginning with the NFC. Ladies and gentlemen, football is back and what better way to celebrate your favorite team than with some autographed memorabilia that is affordable. And don't worry because today's sponsor of my giveaway has got you covered. Pristine Auction is your one-stop shop for any and everything authentic sports memorabilia. I was lucky enough to win this autographed CJ Stroud helmet that I will be giving away to you guys because we just hit 23,000 subscribers. So shout out to you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You guys know it means the world to me. And because of you guys showing support for this channel, I went out and I got you guys this helmet that we are going to be giving away to one lucky winner via my Twitter and inside of my Discord. So make sure that you follow the rules inside of there to be entered to win this helmet. Again, this is an autographed helmet authenticated by Fanatics that was autographed by CJ Stroud, the one, the only, the greatest rookie of all time, my favorite player right now, CJ Stroud. All you simply have to do is go to my pin post on my Twitter, follow the rules there, and you will be entered. And if you want an extra entry, like, comment on this video, and I will make sure to give you an extra entry for the giveaway. But for now, Pristine is offering you $10 off your first winning bid when you use code KRICH10 for $10 off at checkout. Make sure to check them out. They are where I get all my sports memorabilia from. And if you purchase something using code KRICH10 and submit it in my Discord or on that Twitter post, I'll make sure to give you an extra entry. Thank you again to Pristine for sponsoring this giveaway as we just hit 23,000 subscribers. And more importantly, thank you to you guys for supporting me and allowing me to do this full time. But for now, let's get back into the video. Now for the Carolina Panthers, we're gonna start off with Bryce Young. And yes, this might be a little bit early to call, but Bryce Young is already looking like one of the all time bad NFL draft picks. Not only did they trade their star wide receiver in DJ Moore in a huge array of picks to get him first overall, they they also missed out on CJ Stroud, who already looks like a star in his own league. And obviously, yes, Bryce Young, he is in a tough situation, but Young seems to be a part of the problem in Carolina, throwing for just 11 touchdowns and 18 starts and going two of 16 in those games. Like, I mean, look, on Sunday against the Raiders, Andy Dalton stepped in and he looked great, which that doesn't make the case for Bryce Young any better. He does have time on his side, but with the Panthers having a good shot at a high draft pick again this year, it does look like the ex-Alabama man's days could be numbered in Carolina. Now, how can we talk about bust without mentioning the Chicago Bears and Mitchell Trubisky? And while yes, we'll give Kevin White an honorable mention here, it's only fitting that the worst bust for the team that can never get it right at QV should be a quarterback. Mitchell Trubisky was taken second overall in 2017 after the Bears traded up a spot to secure his services, and he never looked like a second overall pick at any point in Chicago. In his four seasons in the Windy City, he was barely league average with a total passer rating of 87.2, which saw him released after his rookie deal was up. And I think the worst thing about just taking Mitchell Trubisky at that point too was that they also missed on Patrick Mahomes, who was a part of that same draft class. But don't worry, this next team almost outdid the Bears. For the San Francisco 49ers, we're going to have to go with Trey Lance. And due to the emergence of Brock Purdy, Trey Lance has almost become a forgotten bust for the 49ers, especially considering they traded three first round picks to get him, a decision which looks more baffling as time goes on. Lance made just four starts as a Niner, rarely looking convincing before Purdy replaced him in late 2022 and never looked back. I mean, for most teams, trading away three firsts for a quarterback that played four games before being traded would be a massive setback. But somehow the 49ers have kept rolling regardless, appearing in last year's Super Bowl. Lance is now in Dallas where his NFL career remains in the balance. But this next quarterback's fate was sealed from the moment he was drafted. For the Arizona Cardinals, we have Josh Rosen. And unlike many quarterbacks on this list, Josh Rosen lasted just one year with his team before they had seen enough of him and moved him on. Picked 10th overall in 2018 above the likes of Lamar Jackson, Rosen was hoped to be the new hope of the Arizona Cardinals. And he famously claimed that the nine players picked above him were quote unquote mistakes. Rosen's sole season as an NFL starter did not 
not back this up at all as he had a woeful 66.7 passer rating, more picks than touchdowns, and worst of all, a 3-10 record as a starter, which would give the Cardinals the first overall pick the following year, which they would use for his successor in Kyler Murray. Rosen has not played in the league at all since 2021, marking out his position as one of the worst all-time bad draft picks. For the New York Giants, we're going to have to go with DeAndre Baker because in 2019, he, they drafted him out of Georgia, looking to beef up their secondary after a disappointing 5-11 season. However, Baker had a rough rookie year as one of the worst cornerbacks in the league, according to PFF. That offseason too, Baker was charged with armed robbery and aggravated assault, which compelled with his poor performances were enough to convince the Giants to release him. And currently, he does play in the UFL. Now, in the 2020 draft, the Eagles could have had Justin Jefferson at pick number 21, but they decided to go for the TCU wideout and Jalen Rigor instead. During his two years in Philly, Eagles fans were left cursing this decision as Justin Jefferson has gone on to be a three-time All-Pro superstar, while Rigor recorded less than 700 yards in his two seasons before being traded to Minnesota. And as we all can remember, Rigor's time in Philly was marred with drops, and he is currently a free agent looking for one final chance in the big time. And speaking of teams haunted by what could have been we move on to the 2017 Cowboys who with pick 28 Dallas selected defensive end Taco Charlton out of Michigan hoping that he would be the game wrecker the team was looking for on defense. Instead Charlton lasted two years in Dallas failing to prove he was much more than average before bouncing around several different teams in the five years since. The game wrecker they needed was TJ Watt, who went to Pittsburgh two picks later and has been a superstar ever since. Now, for the Washington Commanders, there are a few options to pick from, but it's hard to ignore a first-round pick who never played a game for the team. In 1996, the team drafted Andre Johnson out of Penn State to play offensive tackle, but very quickly the team determined they had made a huge mistake and Johnson wasn't up to the standard, not featuring at all in his rookie season, before year two he was cut, becoming the consensus worst pick in Commander's franchise history with zero games played. And now for the Detroit Lions, it's gonna have to go to Joey Harrington, who honestly drafting hasn't really been great for them before they got Dan Campbell, but in 2002, that was definitely not the case. In that draft, Detroit selected Oregon quarterback Joey Harrington with the number three overall pick, beginning four terrible years in the Motor City with him under center. Harrington sometimes is forgot as a bust as he was drafted two picks below David Carr, but he really does sum up an era of Lions football with an 18 and 37 record over that time the team went absolutely nowhere. Now for the Packers we're gonna have to go a little bit further back and go to 1981 actually for their pick and it's gonna go to Rich Campbell who is a quarterback that surprisingly the Packers actually missed on despite them having three Hall of Famers since this dude. Like as I said it's pretty impossible to imagine the Packers getting it wrong at quarterback but they did in 1981 when things were very different. Because with the sixth overall pick that year, Green Bay selected Rich Campbell, who never even started a game for this team in his four seasons at Lambeau Field. Apparently, Campbell was never trusted by his offensive coordinator during this time, even though the team was distinctly average in those four years. But don't worry, because the Packers' next first round quarterback, who was Aaron Rodgers in 2005, went a lot better. Now, for the Minnesota Vikings, we're gonna have to go to Laquan Treadwell, who in 2016, they were looking for an explosive wide receiver to help following up an 11-5 season and to cement themselves among the NFC's top teams. And although Michael Thomas and Tyreek Hill were both on the board, the Vikings settled on Laquan Treadwell, who was hoped to be their next big star in purple. However, in his first season, he was barely featured, picking up just one reception all year, and his following three years weren't successful either, with just 701 yards and two touchdowns in his four seasons in Minnesota. So this is definitely one for all Vikings fans to forget. And as we flip to the Atlanta Falcons, they are the second team on the list to have missed out on the TJ Watt sweepstakes, as the Falcons gave up two draft picks in order to secure Takaris McKinley out of UCLA in the 2017 draft. The team needed a pass rusher back and went for McKinley to plug up the gap at the 26th pick. And while McKinley did have some success in Atlanta, he suffered various injury issues and never quite lived up to the expectations in his four years on the team with just 17 and a half sacks as a Falcon, so it's not exactly TJ Watt numbers. Now over to the New Orleans Saints as where they drafted in 2021, they selected Peyton Turner with the 28th overall pick out of Houston, and it's fair to say he's firmly in the bust pile. He's another one who's seen his career derailed by injury as Turner has only played 18 games for the Saints, but hasn't been productive in when he's been featured, recording just three sacks and 30 tackles in this time. For Tampa Bay though, they surprisingly, their bust is going to be to a K 
kicker where in a league where so many elite kickers are undrafted the Bucks decision to use a second round pick on a kicker in 2016 was super bizarre then and is even more bizarre now although he was an all-american in college his pro career was nowhere near as successful missing nine kicks in his rookie year as a buccaneer Aguayo had the worst field goal percentage of any kicker in 2016 and was waived during the 2017 preseason never to be seen again in the league like it was a truly strange waste of a second round pick in 2016 but another wasted pick has to go to the rams who used it on greg robinson and i mean in recent history the rams have famously elected to trade away early picks meaning we have to back a while to find a truly bad early pick by this organization and i mean as a result of a trade with washington the rams had two first rounders in 2014 and chose to use their first pick on greg robinson a seemingly sure thing offensive tackle from auburn however robinson struggled as a ram being moved around the line not performing any position and failing to cement a place as a starter who was ultimately traded to the lions in 2017. the 2014 first round wasn't all bad though as they picked up a guy named aaron donald with the second pick they had in that first round finally though we look at the seattle seahawks who drafted linebacker aaron curry fourth overall in the 2009 draft curry was considered by many to be a can't miss prospect in this draft class and as a result, the Seahawks splashed out big, giving him a six-year deal, which included a huge $34 million guarantee for a non-quarterback rookie. Over his first two seasons, Curry did not fulfill the potential, picking up just five and a half sacks and failing to make any impact on the Seahawks defense. By 2011, he had lost his starting job and was traded to Oakland, where he would only play one more season, leaving the league for good in 2012. And as we flip to the AFC side now, this is where things get very interesting and how can we not start with Mac Jones and the New England Patriots. And look, while obviously he had huge shoes to fill in New England at the time, it's fair to say that Mac Jones did not live up to the hype at all after being drafted in the first round of 2021. Following a decent rookie season, Jones continued a steady decline, having a rough 2022 season before his third year as a Patriot saw him record a 2-9 record before being benched for Bailey Zappi. Three years on the Pats had gone backwards with Jones at quarterback, and was shipped to Jacksonville for a six rounder. So I think it's safe to say that pretty much every Patriots fan is hoping that Drake May is much better than what they had in Mac Jones. Next though, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers and Devin Bush, who actually the Steelers are traditionally known as one of the better run franchises in football, but of course, everyone does get it wrong sometimes. In 2019, Pittsburgh traded up 10 spots to snag linebacker Devin Bush, who they would hope would be the final piece to an already strong defense. Ultimately though, Bush did not live up to the expectations in the Steelers city suffering a bad injury in his second year that he never fully recovered from bush makes it here due to the decision to trade up and miss out on brian burns or dexter lawrence in the process for the new york jets though in 2008 they used their six overall selection on vernon golston a dominant defensive end out of ohio state after an explosive combine the jets were sold on him as a dynamic defensive player set to change the fortunes of a 4 and 12 side stuck in new england's shadow however golston's contributions to the jets defense ended up being next to nothing as he made just 42 tackles across three seasons, failing to record a single sack. Despite featuring in a strong Rex Ryan defense, Golson did not make an impact at all and would not play another snap after his release after just three seasons in New York. And now as we flip to Buffalo, they haven't had major busts in recent years, although the 2013 pick of quarterback EJ Manuel is one exception. And look, straight up, the 2013 draft was a dead zone for new quarterbacks, but Buffalo felt the need to reach for their franchise guy at pick 16, picking EJ Manuel out of Florida State mostly just out of desperation I think. After four disappointing years which saw him bench for Kyle Orton and Tyrod Taylor, Manuel had clearly proven himself not to be the Bills quarterback going forward with a passer rating below 80. This is honestly just a cautionary tale that if there aren't any viable quarterbacks in round one, just don't take one. The same can't be said for the Dolphins though as they were another AFC East team that whiffed hard in 2013 using the third overall pick on defensive end Deion Jordan out of Oregon. Jordan had been an All-American in college, but his NFL career barely got going due to his repeated breaches of the league's substance policy. His third offense saw him miss the entire 2015 season, and he wouldn't be able to play in 2016 either, before being released by the Dolphins at the end of that one. Truly just a total waste of potential here and a real what-if for the organization. For the Cincinnati Bengals, though, Akali Smith has to be the pick here as, Collage as Kajana Carter is lucky to miss out here as the number one overall pick who finished his career with 1100 yards due to injuries after being drafted in 1995. He misses out on that though due to the 1999 third overall pick that the Bengals took who goes down as one of the worst 
worst pass rushers the league has seen in 30 years. Drafted following the great career at Oregon, Smith just could not adjust to the realities of the NFL, failing to learn the playbook and missing film study, which was clearly seen on the field. Smith started 12 games in 2000, throwing for just three touchdowns and six picks, making him the worst starter in the league. Unsurprisingly, the Bengals ripped up his seven-year contract early in 2002, bringing the end to a failed experiment in Cincinnati. And what is a generational bust list without talking about Johnny Manziel as being one of the biggest, if not the biggest of all time, besides maybe Jamarcus Russell and Bryce Young? As we all know, the Browns have so many options here, but we feel we have to go with Johnny Football, a man that Skip Bayless once said would be bigger in Cleveland than LeBron. Needless to say, he was wrong on that one. Manziel was an absolute college phenom at Texas A&M, but none of that translated to the pros, partly as he was undersized, but partly due to the reported attitude issues, which saw him fail to make any impact on the league, starting just eight games and throwing as many touchdowns as interceptions. Just two years into his NFL career, it was all over with no other team willing to take a chance on him. The fall from grace from Heisman Trophy winner to totally washed in just three years marks him as one of the league's all-time great busts. And now, but as we flip to the Baltimore Ravens, they are another one of the league's better drafters, but we have to talk about Matt Elam, a safety taken in 2013 to replace the legendary Ed Reed. Elam was a first round pick, but didn't play like one, recording just one pick in four years in Baltimore. His time in the league came to an end after his rookie deal, as no other team gave him a second chance based on his time as a Raven. But as we flip to the Texans, this one is one of the harsher picks as David Carr entered the league for an expansion franchise in 2002 and just didn't have a great situation to work with. In his rookie season, he broke the record for sacks with 76, highlighting how bad this line was. Regardless, Carr didn't play well in his five years in Houston, throwing more picks than interceptions, recording five straight loss, and recording five straight losing seasons. Victim of circumstances or not, he proved to be a failure at the all-pro level and sent the Texans back to the drawing board. Now in 2011 though, the Jaguars traded up six places in the draft to reach for their quarterback of the future, Missouri star Blaine Gabbert at pick 10. However, his time in Duval County would prove to be a disaster with a record of 5-22 as a starter before being benched three games into his third year. The Jags spent years searching for a franchise quarterback something that they've truly never had. Instead of Gabbard in this draft, they could have had a guy like J.J. Watt who went one pick later. To Tennessee though, who have one of the more recent busts in Isaiah Wilson who was drafted in the first round of the 2020 draft. Wilson torpedoed his NFL career in record time, being arrested for a DUI at the beginning of the year and also being charged with various other driving offenses during the season. Wilson played just four snaps in the league and the Titans released him, just a total waste of huge promise he showed at Georgia. And now one of my personal favorites have to be the Denver Broncos here who were just yet another team desperately reaching for a quarterback who the 2016 Broncos actually traded up for Memphis quarterback Paxton Lynch in the very first round looking for the replacement of Peyton Manning. Very quickly though it became clear that Lynch was not the guy as he failed to displace even Case Keenum and Brock Osweiler for the starting gig long term. Lynch just made four starts going one and three and ultimately playing in the XFL just another long line of failed Broncos quarterbacks. For the Chiefs though, let's go all the way back to 1983 with the seventh overall pick where they could have had either Dan Marino or Jim Kelly, two future Hall of Famer quarterbacks who would no doubt have transformed the fortunes of a struggling franchise, but instead they went with Todd Blackledge who never started more than eight games and was out of Kansas City by 1987 throwing more picks than touchdowns along the way. And like look, no pick in the last 40 years for the Chiefs has been that bad to miss out on either one of those guys. But of course, we're going to have to talk about the Chargers and Raiders as our last two teams who have possibly the biggest bus of all time, starting with the Chargers, who have one of the just legendary all-time draft busts was the 1998 Chargers that traded up to second overall for Washington State quarterback Ryan Leaf. And while the Chargers had missed out on Peyton Manning at number one, many assumed Leaf would be just as good and would lead any team to plenty of success. But everything went wrong on and off the field. Leaf's 1998 season was dreadful, throwing just two touchdowns and 15 picks as the Chargers went 5-11. He also fell out with coaches and reporters and struggled to deal with the pressure of being an NFL quarterback. He returned in 2000 and he was still awful, recording a 1-8 record as a starter, giving the team no choice but to move on after three years of off-field chaos. Leaf honestly ranks near the top of the all-time draft bus, but right alongside him is often another quarterback from the same division from the Raiders. And now look, in 2007, it was one of the best ever. With the first 14 picks, they saw Calvin Johnson, Joe Thomas, Adrian Peterson, Patrick Willis, Marshawn Lynch, 
and Darrell Rivas all taken. The Oakland Raiders, though, missed on all of these and picked up Jamarcus Russell, who proved to be an absolute disaster at quarterback. Russell started 25 games across three seasons in Oakland with a 7-18 record and an abysmal pass rating of 65.2. He came under criticism for being overweight and was said to be lazy, famously claiming to have watched tapes with game film that were just actually blank. And truly, whether another organization would have gotten more out of Russell is really unclear, but he definitely earns his place among legendary draft busts. But I want to know what you guys think. Who is the biggest draft bust of all time? What is the current situation or what are your current opinions on Bryce Young and just how he stands as being a bust right now? Honestly, I don't know. It's going to be crazy to see what does happen. But if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure that you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.